Good evening, everyone. Time for another silver update. Now, this is the 15 minute chart of silver and gold uh, overlaid. And the reason I brought this up is because we had an interesting reaction after the SmackDown. Uh, big rally in gold, well, not a really big rally, but you can see a, a rally in gold here that pretty much brought it back to near an average of where it had been trading previously. But you can see that silver just nowhere near caught up to where gold was trading. So that's kind of a strange anomaly. It's happened in the past, not really to that much extent. Um, what does it mean? It seems to me to mean that um, they got what they wanted, which was a brief smackdown in silver, and uh, they're letting it come back. So let's pull out a little bit farther. This is the same thing on the 30 minute you can see something similar happening here and you can see that that resolve to the upside with silver catching up with gold if we go out a bit further again it's still uh standing out there as a unique one um we really need to probably get out to the daily to see a divergence of that size um there's some back in here so my guess is that's going to resolve to the upside. I said before when I predicted if we got that chance of the smackdown out of this uh, flag for formation that uh, it would probably be a brief bounce. and That looks like what it's going to be. Um, but then again, there could be a lot of volume and bring the selling down. The volume is still on the heavy, heavy side. You can see two big volume spike areas that we're looking at. The, the initial one that was the initial 15 bottom. And then uh, this one here is a pretty big volume spike as well. So let's go and look. Uh, well, before we look at some stories, let's take a look at crude oil because that's uh, starting to rally. You can see it's putting in a very big volume spike and it's it's still going to have to rally quite a bit to get up to breaking the trend line but you can see that it's it's attempting a rally and uh, we'll see if that gets legs you can see it's not really far to get to 50 bucks so that would be an interesting twist to see uh, oil start to rally now um, I wanted to show you some financial charts before we uh, take a look at the the gold story but I wanted you to look at these some of these financial charts. The three that I picked are the Baltic Dry Index, the Velocity of M2 Money Stock, and the M1 Money Stock. Now I think these are really interesting because there's something going on behind the scenes that they're just not telling us about. We know that the Baltic Dry Index has been sick for a very long time. It got down to around 1,000 at the very bottom of the financial crisis. It can't, you can see it's it's a 95% decline. Again, this is prices uh, for shipping prices. Now that's impacted by uh, a little bit impacted by fuel prices, but it's mainly impacted by how many what supply of ships there are and how much demand there is for uh, the freight. That that's what determines the rate. So you can see that there's really not a lot of demand for the shipping capacity that's out there. Now another chart that kind of fits in with that is this velocity of M2 money stock. Now you can see the shaded areas. This is from the Federal Reserve. The shaded areas are in darker gray there and you can see that this chart, uh, it hasn't always, but uh, recessions have coincided with drops and uh, here's one here in 1980, and here's another one in 1990, here's the one in 2000. The interesting thing about this one is that this coincided with a very large drop, and then as soon as the recession was declared to be over, a little bit of rally, and then a drop almost as large as the other drop, and that's in a non-recessionary period. Now, you're not really gonna find anything similar to that. Maybe back here in the 80s, you can see a drop from here to here, uh, during a non-recessionary period, but nothing like this drop. So we have a, a massive drop. Velocity of money stock, that's how fast the money is moving in the system. Now, what's so strange about that is comparing it to the M1 money stock. And this isn't the velocity, this is just the amount of money 
in the M1 money supply. So you can see that, and as you know, they stopped reporting M3 back in 2006. But the growth in the M1, you can see since the beginning of the financial crisis, it's gone from about, say, 1400 to 2800 So it's doubled, and uh, it's kind of that hockey stick. And quite similar to the other indicator, you can see that during the recessions, it spikes up and then it levels off. You can see um, in a lot of these, though, it did continue to rise. Here's a leveling off here. Here's a spike up, level off, and then up some more. But here, we don't even have a leveling off. We have a spike up and then a resumption up and just straight up. And it has gone up more, uh, certainly dollar-wise, but poss possibly even percentage-wise, in a non-recessionary period than it has in any other period. So what's going on behind the scenes here? Well, I think what's going on behind the scenes is their system is falling apart. And they're doing everything they can to try to keep it together by pumping up the money. This money, of course, uh, is going into the banks. The banks aren't loaning it out. And it's just being recycled between the Federal Reserve and the banks. That's, I think, what accounts for these charts. But I want to play a little bit of an interview with Michael Rivera, Rivero, who's uh, what what's really happening site, and um, he was did the gold conspiracy program. He's on there with Rory on the Daily Coin. I want you to listen to his explanation about a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes. He's going to start off with what happened with Dominique Strauss Kahn. So we'll play that now. Explain what happened with the Dominique Strauss Kahn, who was the former head of the uh, International Monetary Fund, the IMF. And they're, they're thieves, one and all, first of all. And Dominique Strauss-Kahn was actually removed from an airplane that was headed to Germany, I believe, for a meeting. And remind us, if you would, Michael, of what that meeting was about. Because if I remember correctly, it was pretty important, and his absence from that meeting was pivotal. Well, the situation is we have seen more and more high-level individuals uh, start to question uh, what has been going on with the financial services sector. Uh, it began with uh, Elliot Spitzer, who was starting to raise the alarm about what is called naked short selling on the, the stock market, which is actually illegal, but it goes on all the time. He got hit with a prostitution scandal and uh, driven from office. With regard to Dominique Strauss-Kahn, he was becoming very, very alarmed at signs that gold bullion that was supposed to be on deposit at the New York Federal Reserve, uh, the Bank of England, the Bank of France, uh, might not actually be there. And the uh, problem is that these uh, depositories, which operate like giant savings uh, safety deposit boxes, uh, there, it's not like you put the gold in and they get to use it, and yet they were doing it. Apparently, in order to keep gold prices down, gold that belonged to other people, other banks, other countries, was being leased out the back door to dump on the market to keep gold prices down. And we, uh, they got into a situation where they could not bring the gold back. Uh, they, uh, they couldn't afford to do it. It just was not available out there on the market. The mine output wasn't uh, suitable for it. And so it became, the, it became this huge cover-up where the attitude of the Federal Reserve was, well, as long as it's listed on our bookkeeping, you don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> and there, there are now uh, six nations that are demanding their gold, which was stored for safety in New York, they thought, uh, to be returned. Venezuela managed to get their gold repatriated. Then Germany uh, started asking for their gold back, for at least part of their gold back. And that's a significant amount because at the beginning of World War II, um, uh, Europe was sending their gold to New York to keep it out of the hands of the Nazis. And uh, Germany, as they started to rebuild from World War II, uh, their, their gold was still in New York. And it's been left there because... Uh, the, the way these things work is down at the bottom of the New York Federal Reserve, there are all these little individualized uh, lockers with the names of banks and nations on them. And at the end of each business cycle, 
uh, account imbalances are settled by taking a gold brick out of uh, the Netherlands closet and putting it over in France's closet. And that was supposed to uh, be the surety behind all the paper currencies and electronic transactions that were going on. But following the revelation that some of the gold bars bearing hallmarks of the New York Fed and Fort Knox had tungsten cores, Germany became very, very nervous about whether their gold was actually there in the New York Federal Reserve and the Bank of France and the Bank of England. And so they issued a request for some of their gold to be returned, and they immediately got the big stall. Uh, and the Bank of France was saying, oh, it'll be five years before we can send it back. Uh, Bank, uh, the New York Federal Reserve said it'll be at least eight years. They even refused inspections, saying, oh, well, we're not set up for tourists. Right. Uh, and, 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 and to see why this is so suspicious, let's say that you have a safety deposit box at your local bank. And into it, you put a few gold coins and your aunt's heirloom bracelet. And you go into the bank and say, I'd like to take my items out of the safety deposit box. And the bank says, we can't let you do it. Uh, and, and we can't even let you inspect your, your objects here. Just stand over on that side of the room and I'll lift the lid on the box and you can look inside. And you look inside the box and you see a bunch of those chocolate coins wrapped in gold foil and some kind of a bracelet that you know is not your aunt's. And then the banker slams the lid shut and says, see, everything's fine, and he puts it back in the vault. And that's kind of what Germany was going through. And Germany's private central bank, the Bundesbank, uh, is firmly on the side of the New York Fed and not the German government and the German people. And they have been running interference all along saying, we, we, we trust the New York Fed. There's no need to look at the actual gold. There was actually an editorial that came out on CNBC. Uh, saying it doesn't matter if the gold is really there or not as long as the paperwork says it's real. And that made everybody very, very nervous. Now, supposedly Germany's gotten back some of their, their gold, we So I'm going to stop that there. It's, that's what's going on behind the scenes. Um, I think that's a very good explanation. Um, how much has been rehypothecated? I don't think they. I don't think the Federal Reserve has any gold left to tell you the truth. And uh, I think that's why they're so reluctant to do any um, audits or anything like that. I, I think that it's all been rehypothecated. It's probably been pledged or leased or loaned out to, got, found its way to the LBMA or other um, exchanges. And then it's been picked up cheaply by the Chinese and the Indians and, and it's gone east. So uh, these charts show you how desperate the situation is for the Federal Reserve. Um, and I think that it's just as des as desperate a situation with the gold situation. They're just trying to buy time. Um, what are they going to do? What type of a crisis are they going to have? I don't know. But I can pretty much guess that the crisis that they're going to have is a way to blame a scapegoat for the collapse in the system. The paper system will collapse. When that happens, obligations will be reneged upon. Investments will go to zero. Uh, banks may be shuttered. All this stuff is going to happen. Uh, this is all just building up behind the scenes. And that's why we just need to keep stacking silver. And we'll talk to you next time.